Hi, I'm Caroline Freeland. You might know me from some good blues and some good wine. Now, I love a good buzz, but not in my ears. Please protect your ears in noisy environments. Protect your ears and protect your health. Good evening. I'm Joey McIntyre, and I am so happy to be your MC for this evening and welcome you to tonight's virtual gala, supporting the programs and services of the Center for Hearing and Communication, or CHC, an organization that is near and dear to my heart, as my son Reese has been receiving services at CHC for the last few years. And before we go any further, let me please introduce our interpreter for the evening, Mara Zuckerman. So, for the past 26 years, CHC has put on an amazing gala. While we can't be together in person, our virtual night together will be filled with entertainment. You'll learn more about CHC, hear from the musical genius and my good friend from our days working together in Wicked, Mr. Alex Lackamore, and of course, the opportunity to support this great organization. CHC is the leading hearing healthcare organization in the country. They provide audiology, communication, and mental health services to people of all ages who are hard of hearing and deaf. And they do this regardless of a person's ability to pay. That is huge. And as always, CHC makes all of its events accessible to people with all degrees of hearing loss and communication needs. As you can see on your screen tonight, we have a sign language interpreter and a real-time captioning. So thank you all for being here. It's gonna be a great night. And to kick things off, and before we get to all the fun, I do wanna take a few minutes to share my story. I first got to know CHC and all their incredible programs when my family came to New York City and we needed help for Reese, who was born with severe hearing loss. I can tell you, as a parent, finding out that your baby can't hear your voice 
is devastating. Um, it felt like this huge rock was dropped on me and I couldn't, couldn't even breathe almost. And my stomach was in knots. And that feeling uh, lasted until I finally got educated. You know, I got the information and it went from, oh my God, and fearing that someday my son might be walking out into the street and I'm calling after him and he's not going to hear me. And, you know, you just think of the worst things. And because of place, places like CHC, um, I found out that it was going to be okay. And there's just work involved. And so that's where CHC comes in and comes in to help families coping with hearing loss like mine. CHC is where Reese got his hearing test, speech therapy, and academic support. They're no joke. They, they, there's a lot of tough love there. I know. I've, I've seen what Reese <laughs> has to go and he takes his classes and it's, um, it's really good work, but you know you're really getting taken care of. Um, they even have a, a mentorship program where Reese and kids like him can hang out with young professionals who also have hearing loss. And after a while with CHC and in the CHC community and the support of friends and family, I realized it's going to be more OK. It's it's going to be amazing. And Reese's hearing loss is not it's it, it's it's just a part of who he is. It, it doesn't have to define him and it doesn't define him. CHC's vision is communication without limits for all people, young and old, with all degrees of hearing loss. That's what I see in Reese, no limits. Thank you, CHC, for being there for parents when they find out their baby has hearing loss. Kids in school, adults, older folks, everyone. Here's just a glimpse, a glimpse into a few more stories in the incredible work at CHC. Yeah, you have to keep them. Yeah, I know. Can I go next? Yes. Hey, go ahead. Cheese. Stop. My knees say cheese. <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Chapter three. Do you need another ball? Do you need another ball? Good ball. Ball. Good. Every word that comes out of his mouth, good, bad, or indifferent, is a source of joy for me just to know that there was a point in time where he didn't hear anything at all and I wasn't sure what was going to become of that. I feel like I've made a lot of progress since I was like three years old and I have a lot of I have friends now and I, I enjoy my classes because I can engage in discussions. CHC has has made a huge impact on our lives. We really feel like CHC is our family. Wow, oh. you got extra. <laughs> I heard corn, cake, and peas. We got extra carrot, not the carrot. <laughs> <laughs> what did you hear? Corn, a cake, a pea. Yeah. Will you sing with me? Row, row, row. Row, 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 this morning, we were watching the Disney Channel and the little theme songs that play in between shows, he was trying to sing the songs. I could have cried this morning. It's really hard to describe how proud I am to be Aiden's mom, how proud I am of Aiden and how far he's come. And underpinning all that success is all the support that we have received. I guess like a lot of people, it took me a long time to acknowledge that I needed help and then getting the help and then really it was a revelation that I could be helped. All the other places that I've been to have been audiologists who made me a hearing aid. 
um, but there was no continuity. It's like, here's your aid and, and good luck. Um, CHC makes a commitment that's a lifetime. CHC really sees the potential um, for Maymay and others uh, that have hearing loss. And um, we also believe that uh, Maymay has no limits and it's great to be part of CHC that also believes that there are no limits for individuals with hearing loss. CHC really transforms lives. It did for my family, and CHC does this for tens of thousands of people every year. The only way that CHC can do what it does best is with support from people like you. And with your help, they can continue to really change lives for people who are hard of hearing, deaf, or deaf blind. So let me introduce to you a very special guest tonight who is going to help CHC meet its goal of raising $500,000 tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, CK Sweat, coming to you from CHC. Good evening, everyone. CK Sweat here, reporting live from 50 Broadway, home of CHC. I'm on a typically noisy Manhattan sidewalk, so let's go inside where I'm sure we're gonna be able to hear and communicate so much better. See you in a bit. So here we are in the lobby of CHC. And the first thing you'll have noticed is that I switched my floral printed mask for this clear one. You probably already know the answer to why I did this, but just to be emphatic, it's critical that all CHC staff have masks that make their mouths 100% visible for the best possible communication. We are keeping everyone safe while not losing the ability to communicate clearly. Hi, I'm Bill Ritter. I'm an anchor at WABC-TV Channel 7 Eyewitness News, and I have been the broadcast chair for CHC's gala for more than a decade. My honor to do that. But I've seen firsthand how improving hearing can indeed change lives. Hearing, after all, is what connects us to each other and to others. When was the last time you got your hearing tested? So get tested and remember to wear ear protection in noisy environments. Hi, I'm Cassie DePaiva but I'm also a mom of a child with hearing loss. And our son is a senior on the Dean's List at RIT. And I can tell you right now, he probably wouldn't be as successful in his journey if he hadn't received the wonderful services from the CHC when he was a child. So get your hearing screen today. It's free at CHC. As you can see, I'm now in one of CHC's testing booths, and this is not my first testing booth rodeo, so to speak. All the way back in 2016, as we were prepping for that year's gala, I first visited the Center for Hearing and Communication to see the work with my own eyes. And I can remember being struck not only by the attention and care of all the staff working with the young kids, but also the looks of relief and gratitude on the faces of the parents waiting just outside. So much is different now four years later, but I can tell you the looks on the parents' faces out there are exactly the same even behind the masks. And that's in large part why we're going to all this trouble to bring you tonight's virtual gala. This Herculean effort ensures that parents like Joey Parents like those sitting one room over have a place to give their children an opportunity to continue to learn and communicate. And it's not only parents with kids, it's all people who are hard of hearing and deaf, from infants to the elderly, who come here to break through the isolation and forge all important human bonds through communication. With your help, Tonight, we are going to raise a half million dollars and to inspire you even more, an incredibly 
generous donor has put up a matching gift of $200,000, meaning your donation will be doubled one to one until we hit that number. So please text CHC2020, all one unit, to 44321. Or click on the donate button in the Go Lively window and be part of the extended family that helps everyone hear and communicate. Thank you, CK, and many, many thanks to all of you out there donating and supporting CHC, an organization that means so much to my family. And speaking of family, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Reese McIntyre. Hi, buddy. Hello. <laughs> you having a good time tonight? Yeah. Yeah, we're raising awareness and money for all the great work that CHC does. Now, you've been going to CHC for a few years, right? Yeah. Yeah. And do you have a good time there? Yeah. And is it hard work? Yeah. Mm, do they do a lot of love and fun? Yeah. See that? I know that to be true. I'm really proud of the work you do there. And that's why we're here tonight. Now, to tell you more about CHC, I'd like to introduce to you Heather Baker, CHC's Executive Vice President and Co-Chair of tonight's gala, who will share her personal story. Thank you, Joey. And thank you to all of you who have joined us tonight to celebrate CHC. As Joey said, I'm Heather Baker, a CHC board member and a co-chair of tonight's event. I am also a longtime client of CHC. I started to lose my hearing as a teenager and really began to struggle to hear in my early 20s. I was single, social, going out in the evenings with friends, and as you can imagine, the last thing I wanted to tell people was that I was hearing impaired, let alone that I wore hearing aids. I felt embarrassed, defective, and ashamed. When I finally shared my hearing loss with a coworker, she said that she was relieved to learn about it as she had thought that I just didn't like her because I often wouldn't respond to her. And for me, that was much worse than some preconceived ideas I had in my mind about people who wore hearing aids. It was at that point, and with the help of my friends and family, that I began to wear my hearing aids every day and communication got easier. But remember, hearing aids aren't like glasses. While they improve hearing, they don't correct it. Several years later, I moved to New York and learned about CHC. My entrance into CHC was through a speech reading class, which was transformative, not only because it improved my lip reading, but because it connected me with other people who were working to cope with their hearing loss in their daily lives. CHC helped me get the right hearing aids and most recently guided me to get my cochlear implant providing me with the support I needed throughout the entire process. I have seen firsthand how CHC makes a difference in the lives of so many people who are struggling with hearing loss. When I tell people that I have a hearing loss, their first reaction is to just speak louder or even shout. But for many people like myself, that really doesn't work. Words and sounds aren't just softer, they aren't clear. So for just a moment, I'd like you to experience my hearing loss. Here we go, normal hearing. You're not gonna be able to do this, is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you that's probably what I'm gonna do, is oh, not do it. You're just gonna sit here and listen? Yes. Tell me about work. How was your day? I don't wanna talk about work. Now, this is the way I hear it. I'm gonna do this, is that what you're telling me? I'm telling you, that's probably what I'm gonna do. Yeah. You're just gonna sit here and listen? Yes. Yeah. That is how the world would sound to me every day without the help of CHC. And in today's world with COVID and the need for social distancing and the use of face masks, communication has become even more difficult, creating unexpected challenges for people with hearing loss around the world. Almost overnight, I literally have gone from being able to communicate well in almost any situation to really struggling to hear what the person wearing the face mask is saying. The emotional impact and frustration I feel when I enter into a situation where someone is wearing a mask is stressful and overwhelming. As the world has changed, CHC 
has responded. CHC has provided thousands of therapy hours virtually, supporting children with hearing loss who are managing remote learning and helping seniors who are isolated and trying to stay connected. In today's unprecedented circumstances and every day, CHC is there for you wherever you are, physically, emotionally, or even geographically, as we can now provide virtual therapies around the globe. CHC takes the time that is truly needed to understand individual needs. They do this for me, and they do this for thousands of people every year of all ages who are hard of hearing and deaf, regardless of their background or financial circumstances. Across the lifespan, CHC truly transforms lives. Here's the thing. Until I connected with CHC, I never really thought too much about what it means to have a hearing loss. And Heather, she just made it abundantly clear for all of you who are in the dark like I was. There are 48 million people in the U.S. coping with hearing loss and over 450 million worldwide, which all makes the work of CHC that much more critical. But we get very little reimbursement to provide these urgent services. So that's where you come in. CHC can only do all of this with your support. Your donations allow all people, regardless of their ability to pay, to walk through CHC's door to receive help. And the help is needed now more than ever. Emotional health and wellness are a significant part of our programming. There just isn't any other place like CHC, which is why your support means so much. Every donation, up to $200,000 raised, will be matched one for one. So please click that donate button, go on your phone, text the number, join us in bringing hearing and communication to all. In this COVID era, it's challenging enough to have a conversation with a mask on. But imagine the circumstance when you're also dealing with hearing loss. So in this era, one of the things we need to keep in mind is to speak slowly, speak loudly, and consider written communication as well. It's so important to keep communication and dialogue open. It would be amazing if we could all communicate with clear masks but it's just not the case right now. I wanna thank and congratulate the CHC for yet another year of remarkable work. And even though we have this obstacle to face this year of COVID-19, we can't break for a minute. We can't stand down. We have to continue moving forward with fundraising, with involvement, and with commitment to the cause because we're gonna get through this. And when we do, we're gonna have a lot more to celebrate next year. Thanks again. Hey, good hearing? It's like music to your ears. So get your hearing tested. Just call CHC, it's free, okay? Call CHC for a free testing. Isn't that right? It's right. Go do it now, it's for good. There is no one that I can think of who exemplifies CHC's vision of communications without limits more than tonight's honoree, Alex Lackamore. Alex, of course, is best known for his work on the hit Broadway shows Hamilton, Dear Evan Hansen, and In the Heights. Altogether, he has won three Tonys for Best Orchestrations, three Grammys for Best Musical Theater Album, an additional Grammy for producing The Greatest Showman soundtrack, and most recently, an Emmy for Outstanding Music Direction for his work on the FX miniseries Fosse Verdon. And why am I not working more with this guy? Oh my gosh. Oh, by the way, he was also the recipient of the first of its kind Kennedy Center honors for his contribution to Hamilton. What you might not know about Alex is how he's been an inspiring role model to so many kids. Like Reese, Alex has been wearing hearing aids since he was a child and his kindness and generosity of spirit has touched so many. Take a look. I um, first learned that I had hearing loss when I was about four. 
And my mom would notice that if she was calling me from the other room, I wouldn't always hear her because she noticed that there were some things that I wasn't hearing very well. She decided to give me a hearing test. And I think I, I had my first hearing test when I was four. And then I was wearing hearing aids through um, elementary school and junior high school. Around junior high school, I started to get very self-conscious about the hearing aid and I stopped wearing it altogether. Um, and that was a pretty tough period because when I was around, you know, 11 or 12, you try to be cool and you try to fit in and there was a lot of stuff that I was missing. So around the time I was 19, I decided, you know what, I think it's time to get hearing aids. And my life changed when that happened because all of a sudden I could hear so much more and be connected to people a lot more. Did peers or teachers ever like doubt, or doubt your ability to be able to create or compose I'm very lucky that I uh, have very, very supportive parents and I have a mother who is very encouraging. And um, if I said that I wanted to do something, she would help me fulfill whatever that dream was. I grew up in an environment where I didn't have people telling me, no, you can't do this. And I feel so lucky because I'm sure that there are people that aren't that lucky. I, I'm sure that there are people who might say, oh, th you know, that, that's a, a disability or that person will never be able to do blah, blah, blah. If you have anybody in your life that is ever telling you that, uh, that you can't do something because of some uh, obstacle or, or, or some hardship you're dealing with physically, that is possible to beat it. How else has it really helped you with your music and stuff like that? Because of my hearing loss, I've learned how important it is to ask for help. And I've learned how important it is to, to say what it is that I need. For example, when I was going to school and um, I would say to the teachers, listen, hey, I, I have a hearing loss. I need to sit in the front of the class. That for me allowed me to generate a feeling of collaboration. To me, music is about collaboration. And theater, the work that I do mostly, that is really about collaboration. I find that I have tremendous patience to be able to sit with them and to really explain it and, and to take my time because I know what it's like to be on the other end. I know how wonderful it is to have someone helping you and to explain and, and to helping you through. So I think that that has helped me in my music. What's your most special memory from Hamilton? Performing at the White House for me the second time was amazing. To be asked to perform at the White House is a very, very big deal. I would not have gotten to go there if it weren't for Hamilton. I just want to say how cool it is to meet all of you guys. There's something really cool about having people who kind of know what you go through. And when I see all of you guys, you know, it's kind of, I feel like we're all connected in a way. Even though I haven't met any of you before today, it's just kind of, I feel like we're family somehow. And that's just a really cool feeling. When I look at you guys, I see myself in you guys. And I just want to say how cool it is to meet you. And I'm really honored that you took the time to chat with me. That's all I wanted to say. Alex, that was just amazing. Our kids are inspired by you. We are all inspired by you. There are so many people whose lives you've touched. Here are just a few who wanted to share how much you mean to them. Hello, my name is Tommy Kale. I am best known as the person the internet sometimes confuses with Alex Lacamoire because apparently we look alike, but I think he's basically just the better version of me with some sort of facial hair. And I am here to say I have 30 to 60 minutes. Oh, thir seconds? Hmm. I had 30 minutes prepared on how much I love Alex. Uh, so I'll have to give you the short version. Uh, mostly just want to say any group that is honoring Alex is a friend of mine. I'm so thrilled that the center has chosen Alex as someone to recognize for his work. He's clearly established himself as one of the finest folks working in his chosen field. But that is nothing compared to the depth of compassion and humanity that he brings as a friend and as a human being to every room that he enters. So I, I guess I'll just email in the next 59 minutes of material I had because apparently I'm already in a minute. But I'm just so proud to be able to call him my friend and so delighted that he is being uh, celebrated in this way. He should be celebrated in this way every day, including his birthday. Thank you. Why am I saying thank you? Alex, congratulations on receiving the Humanitarian Award from the Center for Hearing and Communication. 
um, since the time we started working together decades ago, I have been aware that you have the best ears in town and uh, what you do is superhuman. The kindness that you bring to working with everyone that you meet is exemplary. I love you and congratulations, Alex. Alex, congratulations on this honor tonight. You are easily one of the most caring, gracious, loyal, humble, giving people I've ever met, not to mention the hardest working person I have ever met. I mean, come on, you're probably orchestrating like two different Broadway projects with your right hand right now at this ceremony. Um, seriously, man, um, I really can't think of anyone more deserving than you. You inspire everyone around you and your music has literally changed people's lives. Um, not to mention you are a role model to, to, to those who really need the hope um, to know that anything is possible. You are living proof of that. So I really hope you can take some time to really enjoy this and really reflect on how amazing you are because Everyone tonight knows that, and that's what we're doing. So um, really, truly, congratulations, and, um, and I can't wait to see you soon. Hey, Alex, congratulations on this award. This is an incredible achievement and extremely well-deserved. You are one of the hardest-working people I've ever met in my entire life, and you always do it with a smile. It's a pleasure to call you a colleague and more a friend. So just much love from me and the girls. Congratulations. Oye, mi socio, maestro, Dr. Alex Lackamore. We are so proud of you and we wish you the biggest congratulations on receiving this honor. I can't think of anybody more special and more deserving of really every award and honor under the sun. Uh, it's truly not an exaggeration to say that you have taught me how to hear not only music, the way it works in your brain, but how to hear people as we move through this journey called life. Um, you really are in a class unto yourself. Your skills are incomparable, and yet, as somebody who's been close to you for 10 years now, you have never once made me feel like I'm being compared to you, and you've made me feel like my own special person. Uh, I'm so grateful for your friendship, for sharing your family with me. Your, your mom's chicharrones are one amazing. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you gave us the greatest gift of all by introducing us and keeping us as part of your family. A huge congratulations to you. I'm so proud of you. We love you. Te queremos mucho, people. Muy orgulloso de ti. Hey, buddy. Huge, huge congratulations. You know, you've been honored so many times in so many ways in so many places, but I'm sure this one is really, really special. So I'm glad to be here with you. You know, for so many years, you've taught me and you've taught so many thousands of people so much about life and what you've done with music. You know, you've taught me about resolutions and tensions and complexities and character in the most subtle details in the work and the way a string works or the way a piano works or the way silence works. And so for so many years, you've been the mentor, you've been the teacher in work that has affected thousands of people. And they hardly know the ways that you've made them float above the ground. And so when I look at it, we are the ones with limitations and parameters, and you're the one who's catapulted us over those parameters and given us inspiration that has simply changed all of our lives. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart for being who you are and for doing the work that you do uh, and doing the work the way you do the work. You've changed my life that way, as you know, and uh, it means a great deal. It's like a war, like it rhymes with guar, not like a war, like it rhymes with chore. It's like a war, like it rhymes with guar, not It's like a It's not right. It's like a You see, I'm nowhere without you, right? This conversation, the Lacamoire, Lacamoire song, is more fun when you're there. And writing every song is more fun when you're there. Congratulations on this incredible honor. Um, I couldn't be more proud of you. I love you very much. I'll call you so you can help me with this. It's like a war, like a Alex, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Center for Hearing and Communication, and in recognition of your limitless abilities and extraordinary talents, it is my distinct honor to present you with the Eleanor Roosevelt Humanitarian Award. Thank you so much. Oh, oh I'm recording right now.
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is happening? <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> what a wonderful surprise. <laughs> wonderful. I, I like the presenter just as much as I like the other word itself. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Much appreciated. Thanks for the surprise, baby. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I hope that you are all safe and healthy wherever you may be. I want to offer my sincere thanks to the CHC, not only for this award, but for the space that they provide for people whose lives are affected by hearing loss. The beauty and truthfully the irony of this distinction is that I never thought that I'd be honored for a personal attribute that I've sometimes considered to be a handicap. To be honest with you all, my feelings around my hearing loss have always been complicated. And while there are times that I forget that I live with this particular challenge, or where I accept my deficiency for what it is. There are plenty of other times where I feel shame around my impairment and I feel like I'm defective. I am self-conscious enough about the topic that when this award was offered to me, I had doubts about accepting it. Was my shortcoming something that I was prepared to glorify? Do I deserve to be a spokesperson for this issue when my hearing loss is not a severe one? Mind you, I've been asked about my hearing impairment in many an interview, and it's not something that I declined to talk about when prompted. So why was I hesitating in accepting this honor? The events of 2020 have created a space for me to reflect. Like many others, the shutdown has forced me to slow down and to uncoil, and it has magnified a discomfort about topics such as race relations, politics, and also about my hearing loss. As I sat with this discomfort, I was able to uncover a truth about why I didn't immediately say yes about accepting an award relating to my hearing. And that truth is, I felt scared to celebrate this feeling of personal inferiority. I was scared to love this part of me. I decided to think about what it could mean if I decided to put aside this fear. I decided to look for where power could be found in my circumstance. And the idea that I had to get on board with was that my experiences and my story could perhaps inspire others who may share some of these same feelings. I had to pay attention to all the times that people have come to me asking for advice because they were looking to acquire hearing aids for themselves or for their family. That made me feel valued. I had to recognize how my journey was actually giving hope to parents who are worried about how their child with hearing loss will function in their school and eventually in their adult life. That made me feel wise. I think about how anytime I see someone with a hearing aid, I don't believe that they are unworthy or less than. Instead, I see them and I think to myself, I understand. I have to assume that they would say the same about me. That is compassion. I think about my father and how the right side of his body was paralyzed after an aneurysm. Even though he woke up from a two month coma to doctors explaining that he'd never be able to drive again or wear regular walking shoes, my dad would eventually drive me to high school every morning in his signature loafers. That is inspiration. I think of Beethoven who, after he lost his hearing completely, would clench a stick in his teeth and hold it against his piano so that he could hear his own music vibrating through his bones. That is commitment. There is always a silver lining, isn't there? There's always some positivity to be found if you look long enough or if you create it. I am choosing to create the positivity. I am advocating for the compassion, not only for those who interact with the hard of hearing, but for those of us who are hard of hearing and who may need to direct that compassion to our own selves. I am championing the commitments that we make, whether it's choosing to wear aids and thus admit that we need some extra help to stay connected to the world, or whether it's deciding that even if we can't hear so well, we're going to be a musician anyway. If you have felt like a loner because you take one-on-one -on -one lip reading classes when none of the other kids do, I see you. I'm here to tell you that you should keep at it and you'll be thankful one day. If you feel the sting every time someone cracks a joke about your hearing because you didn't catch something that someone said, I get it. I suggest 
you ignore those people. There's plenty of things that you can do that they can't, trust me. If you feel scared asking people to repeat things, afraid that they'll think, less, that they'll think less of you, or embarrassed when they overcompensate and therefore sound like they're annoyed with you, believe me, I understand. I can't promise that these feelings will go away. I've been working on these feelings since my childhood. But again, listen to the compassion, honor the commitment, and look for the inspiration. Thank you to my mom, my dad, my little sis for always hanging in there with me. Thank you to my wife, Ileana, for showing me a love that was stronger than anything I ever thought was possible. Thank you to Shelley Borgia, Jessica Frankel, Christina Basingswaite, and everyone at NYC Hearing Associates for always having my back. Thank you to Andrea Pernick and Cindy Simon at South Miami Audiologists for being the ones who helped me realize that it was okay to wear hearing aids again in my late teens. Thank you to every audiologist and every speech therapist and every teacher who took it upon themselves to improve my life by improving the way my life sounds. Thank you to Mrs. Hall for making this little boy feel loved despite the hearing challenges in his life that made him feel different, for being so patient while teaching this seven-year-old how to read lips. And Mrs. Hall, I still have this Garfield bookmark that you gave me in 1982 as a reminder of how simple acts of kindness can make people believe that they can soar. Thank you all so much and uh, my love and best wishes to all of you watching tonight. On a personal note, I am so happy to be a part of this and can't think of anyone more deserving. And now, back to CK at CHC. Please consider a fully tax-deductible donation in any amount. And remember, remember, your donation is doubled up to $200,000. So please, text that number, click that donation link, make it happen. Hello, my name is Renee Elise Goldsberry, and I am forever in awe and indebted to Alex Lackamore for his brilliant work in Hamilton. I'm here today to congratulate my friend on being honored with the CHC Eleanor Roosevelt Humanitarian Award. This amazing award recognizes his work as a role model for hearing matters and the importance of protecting your hearing. Alex! Congratulations, and thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Zilu, and I want to thank you for inviting me to be a part of this event. I'm extremely inspired by the work of CHC, especially as an audio professional myself, a music professional, a person that uses my ears all the time. I just really feel motivated and appreciative of the work that you do for people to enrich their lives and the quality of their audio life. Thanks again. Hey everyone, I'm uh, jazz trumpeter Chris Bote and hey, I love great music sometimes. Well, when you play trumpet, it's gotta be loud, but I urge everyone to protect your ears uh, protect your health and do everything you can to wear the appropriate protection. Um, wish everyone all the best and hope to see you soon. Thank you. And by the way, did you really think I'd let Alex get away without me singing a song with him?
Cause even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to carry you When you're broken on the ground You will be found So let the sun come streaming in You reach up and you rise again Lift your head and look around You will be found Thank you all again so much for being here tonight and for supporting CHC. They could not do this without your help. And there's still time to donate. So go online or text to donate because together we can really, really make a difference. It's been a total honor to spend this time with you guys tonight. Congratulations again to Alex and congratulations to CHC for all the incredible work they do to truly empower people who are hard of hearing and deaf. On behalf of all the babies, kids, adults, and parents, and all the people CHC helps, I thank you so, so much. Thank you.